Please rise. Lord, sanctify us by the truth. Your word is truth. Here again, words written for us in Galatians chapter 5. What I am saying is this, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out what the sinful flesh desires. For the sinful flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful flesh. In fact, these two continually oppose one another, so that you do not continue to do these things you want to do. You may be seated. Dear people belonging to Christ. His doctor looked at him and asked, Is there any pain I should know about? Man thought for a second. He said, No, just the usual amount. The doctor blinked a few times. Well, the usual amount is zero. They stared at each other for a few moments, and then the older man began to chuckle. He could have cataloged all of his aches and pains, the old injuries, that knee that clicks, that stiff shoulder that takes a little bit of warming up before you can even begin to use it, that stiff back that is still a little angry with him from the yard work he had to do last week. But what would be the point of that? There is no fixing any of it, and he wasn't going to stop doing those things and living his life. He wasn't going to take any more medications. He would rather live his life with a little bit of discomfort than sit around and be bored. Comfortable and at ease maybe, but bored. Christians, what is our normal level of pain and discomfort? It isn't zero. Though Galatians is probably Paul's first letter, he speaks from experience and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit about the Christian's life. We know we will often be physically uncomfortable in this life. We know that sometimes dealing with other people leads to more than a little awkwardness and frustration but Paul wants to warn us and prepare us for the discomfort of our spiritual life. Because this is more than pains and aches, more than frustrations. This is a full-on battle. It is the battle for your soul. It is the battle of your soul. And as long as this struggle continues, Christians, you can't be comfortable. The Galatians, especially those who had grown up with a Jewish background, wanted to keep things simple. Their whole lives, they knew what it meant to be one of God's people. They knew what set them apart from those pagan Gentiles. God spoke to them. God gave them their law. God told them what they could eat and what they couldn't eat. God gave them ceremonies to perform. God had given them the law, and he had set them apart with circumcision. Ever since the days of Abraham, God's people had submitted to the Lord, and every male conformed to this part of God's law. It's so simple. This is what God's people do, what they must do. It's the law. But they were looking at outward appearances. They were obsessed with the letter, the details of the law. They were attacking each other over the law. And their arguments and self-righteous pride put the faith at risk. So if they wanted to know what it meant to be a Christian, they needed to throw off the burden of the law and instead follow this instruction. What I am saying is this, walk by the Spirit and you will not carry out what the sinful flesh desires. At first, that too sounds pretty simple. Live your faith 
put it into action. Even when we get to Paul's list later on about what it means to walk by the Spirit, that too at first glance seems quite easy. Love, joy, peace, patience and kindness and goodness. Who can be against those? Those are virtues, right? Well, the sinful flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit. And the Spirit, what is contrary to the flesh, someone will always stand between you and your walk in the Spirit. You. Even after we have been born of water and the Spirit, even after Christ has taken up ref residence in our hearts, even while we are growing in our faith, working on our faith, striving to live out our faith, that sinful flesh still clings to you. And it clings also to sin. These two continually oppose one another so that you do not continue to do the things you want to do. A Christian cannot sin without the Spirit intervening and fighting against the flesh. A Christian cannot avoid sin and do what God desires without the flesh trying to make his life miserable. As long as we live and breathe, as long as this heart beats, as long as our minds think and our hands work, we will not be rid of the flesh. And so Christians, you can't ever be comfortable. When he first found that pile of torn up cloth and fluff, he hoped he had just missed it the last time they had gotten in. But soon he found another, and it was full of insulation from his walls. Then he found the bird seed shells, and worst of all, he found that trail of those little hard brown pellets. He couldn't ignore it. Gross. He didn't want to think about it. He didn't really want to see the signs, but they were everywhere. They were obvious, plain to see. He had mice. Or worse yet, maybe even rats. He hated to think what they were doing inside of his walls. He didn't want to imagine what they might do to his truck, what diseases, germs, fleas, and lice they were bringing into his space. He couldn't possibly ignore those signs. They had to go. Paul says, Now the work of the sinful flesh is obvious. They can't be missed. They are as plain of day. And then Paul lists a sample for us. He says sexual immorality, impurity, complete lack of restraint, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, discord, jealousy, wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, heresies, envy, drunkenness, orgies. <gasps> and to let us know that this is not the exhaustive list, he adds, and things such as these. We could say that this is the Galatians list. And though there might be things in common with other people's lists, this is the list of things that Paul saw among them at that time in their culture. If he were writing to us in our time and in our culture, we would certainly have our own list of signs of the sinful nature, works of the sinful nature. If Paul were writing to you, you would have your own list. We each have our own list of sins. The sins your flesh loves are just as obvious. You cannot fail to notice them if you take the time to look. No one, not even the world around us, will fail to see them. Whether the world sees our sins and affirms you for them or uses your sin to condemn you as a hypocrite, the work of your sinful flesh is obvious even to them. No one ignores those little brown pellets when they see them on the floor of their garage or on the floor of their basement. You can't ignore the hole in the wall, that nest, that stash of food that the pests leave behind. We know that rats and mice are disgusting and destructive. They spoil everything they get into. 
No one is going to let them get comfortable in their home. We aren't going to let ourselves get comfortable pushing their little messes around and cleaning them up day after day. So are you going to ignore the little brown pellets in your own lives? Ignore the damage your sins are doing to you and the people around you? Are we going to ignore the fact that sin is trying to make its own little nest in your heart, the heart that ought to belong to Christ? No Christian can let the flesh get comfortable in his heart. No Christian is just going to be comfortable with any of her sins. If the flesh is comfortable and doing whatever it wants, if you are comfortable with your own sins, then the Spirit is gone from your heart. Paul says, I warn you, just as I also warned you before, that those who continue to do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. We all know what we do when we see the rats and the mice. We set traps. We stuff steel wool in the little holes that we think they're using to get inside. We maybe even employ the services of a feline or a little terrier dog to go and hunt them down for us. So also Paul tells us what we can do with the sinful nature, what we must do with the sinful nature. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. In other words, take your flesh to the cross. There he is uncomfortable. At the cross your flesh meets the Lord. At the cross your flesh dies again and again and along with him your evil works. At the cross the flesh and its sin and all of its mess, they are given to Christ and he removes them forever. There at the cross, the Lord purifies you. He gives you a new heart, a pure heart, a steadfast spirit within you. And so, dear Christians, don't let the flesh get comfortable. Take it to the cross. Do not let yourself get comfortable with its works. But every day, by repentance, by listening to the voice of your God, by remembering your baptism, by regular re regularly receiving the Lord's holy supper, by his forgiveness, by his blood, by his good spirit who works within you, take your flesh to the cross and cut off every opportunity for him to take control. This is not comfortable, but Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory, the victory over your flesh by our Lord Jesus Christ. Christians, in this life you can't be comfortable, but you do have, or rather, He, the Lord Jesus Christ, has you. Paul illustrates the difference between walking by the Spirit and the works of the flesh very clearly in these words. While the flesh has works, the spirit produces fruit. While the works of the flesh are outward and easy to be seen and diagnosed, the fruit of the spirit are unseen within. And we know that the fruit of the spirit is present even in babes and children who cannot produce any grand works that we would praise. Even when our bodies and our minds begin to fail, and we do not have the same works we were once given. Still, we produce the fruit of the Spirit. And each fruit of the Spirit directly contradicts and overrides the works of the flesh. Instead of self-seeking passion, selfless love. Instead of empty pleasures and out-of-control desires, true joy. In the place of searching for strength in idolatry and superstition, peace, wrath, patience, selfish ambition, kindness, instead of the lies that divide goodness and faithfulness to the truth, instead of ambition and scheming, gentleness, instead of being consumed and overwhelmed by desire, 
and, the, and temptation, or letting substances or outward influences direct our actions, self-control. Everything about the fruit of the Spirit opposes the flesh and its works, so walking by the Spirit will never be comfortable for you. Either your flesh will cry out, or at times your new, your new spirit will struggle within you. Walking by the Spirit is not comfortable, but it elevates your life. It reflects your Savior. It opens your heart for the good of others. Christians, you can't be comfortable, but you will produce abundant fruit. Every once in a while, okay, more than every once in a while, we think we want to do or we think we need to do something. Maybe even something we've done a thousand times before, but our body just cries out, I don't want to. When our bodies complain, even hurt, we might, in a moment of wisdom, start to ask ourselves, is this really a good idea? Do I really need to do this? Is there maybe an easier way? And sometimes we find that despite the pain and discomfort, yes, it is the price I'm going to have to pay. And maybe not even just now, but tomorrow morning. Maybe even for the week to come. Are you sure you want to do this? Do you have to? Isn't there another way? When we walk by the Spirit, the sinful flesh is going to do nothing but complain, drag his heels, and sulk. On top of that, we know that the world is going to be constantly twisting the law, dictating to you what should be important to you and enticing you to seek their approval. Right now, we are still privileged enough that it's only their scorn and mockery that begins to make our spirits sweat against the flesh as it screams out for relief. But make no mistake, the world has rarely been content to stop there. Wouldn't it just be easier to go along? Is it really going to be worth it? And then the devil turns the screws. He makes sure that we feel every slight. He tells us we need to be worried and afraid about what our future might hold. And he asks, wouldn't it be easier to just give up? Well, yes. Of course it would. But then you would have to give up Christ. You see, the only way for you to be comfortable in the world to get the devil to leave you alone, to get your flesh to stop its whining and fighting and kicking against you is for you to stop being a Christian, to not worry anymore about producing the fruit of the Spirit, to give in to the flesh and its desires. Our flesh is never going to be comfortable with the Spirit. The world is never going to admire your Christian spirit and reward it. And so, dear Christians, you can't be comfortable. But know this, you belong to Christ. And he who has redeemed you, who has cleansed you, he has also freed you from the power of sin and the devil, and he is worth every discomfort. No, you can't be comfortable. Well, not now, at least. Not until the day he calls you home. And so we fight the fight of faith. We strive against that old sinful flesh. And we place ourselves at the mercy of our God, knowing that he gives us the strength. He gives us the power. He gives us that new spirit. He gives us life, both now and forevermore. Amen. Please rise. And now the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.